Greetings and welcome to the fifth episode of Dvalens Tavern, your go-to gaming podcast. You know, the gaming podcast that is all about gaming news, interviews, reviews, roundtable discussions and whatever, you know, is related to gaming. And I know, I'm sorry, that's it's been a bit, it's been a while since I made my last episode. And it's actually because randomly I went to work one day and then suddenly my voice just disappeared like out of the blue, like just out of nowhere, it just disappeared. I wasn't able to speak with people. And then I came, I went home and for some reason my voice was just like gone for plus like five days. And you probably maybe seen some of my recent YouTube videos where you, you can just hear me struggling trying to, to talk. But now today I actually feel like, you know, I'm in the position again where I can do podcast i can actually sit here and talk for a half hour so um we should uh, definitely go through so thanks for joining again for another advanced tavern gaming podcast episode i am so pleased and happy to have you all on board and let's go through it i have an exciting agenda for today um which i find very exciting myself and today we're going to talk about first of all guild wars 2 yantia's files which is basically a new expansion for guild wars 2 very exciting then we're going to talk about a brand new mmorpg called taris land which is coming out very, very soon then we're going to talk about the next world of warcraft expansion which has officially got a release date also so we're going to talk about the release date and the new things that you can expect from the new world of warcraft expansion and for the last thing we're going to talk about ashen's creation Ashes of Creation, sorry, which is introducing Node War system, Futuring Objectives, Open World PP, and various challenges. So actually, this episode today is a is a MMO episode. We're only going to talk about MMORPGs. So if you're into MMORPGs, you're gonna love this episode. But yeah, let's get to it. So Guild Wars 2, Arena, they basically announced their new expansion called Yantia Wilds. And I have to say, Pretty cool expansion, very cool expansion. Just all like just when looking at it, the expansion is coming out the 20th of August, which is just around the corner. So on the 20th of August, we're getting this brand new expansion for uh, Guild Wars 2. And I could we, we're gonna go through some texts from their websites, but basically I can tell you this expansion is about uh, exploring new lands. Um, having your own housing. So basically you can get your own house now and decorate it. Every class in the game is going to get a new weapon and all of them are going to be using weapon. Sorry, yeah, they're going to be using weapon. Oh God. Uh, what I'm trying to say is they're all going to be using spear. And some of you might already say, hey, we already have spear. Yeah, but only underwater. Now they're actually going to bring the spear from underwater also to on land so basically that's what they call it spear on land and you can imagine all the different classes in the game i can't remember there's like nine classes or something like that they're all gonna have a new weapon which means a new talent tree which means new spells for each class so i can already see myself playing a necromancer with a, a spear and a great sword like a double melee build that could be so sick um but yeah that's like that's like the highlights of the expansion, you know, new land, new weapon, housing. I think that's the main selling point. But uh, let's go through some of the details about this expansion. So I'm going to read up a few stuff um, from this article that they posted themselves. A fresh adventure is on the horizon. Guild Wars 2 Yantia Wilds arrived on August 20, bringing with another year of story and chapter content updates. Bristling with Musad ruins and harrowing to navigate, the fabled isles of Yantia have been carefully guarded by the wizards of Astral Ward, and the most of Tyrius Denisans are the distant legend. But recent events have inspired the world's leaders to create a Tyrian alliance and dispatch the Wayfinder to befriend new allies. As you seek out the lowland Coden colony in Yantia, you will explore, fight, and learn more about the mysteries of Tyrius' past. We got a little bit of information to provide about some key features of Guild Wars 2 Yantia Wilds in the blog. And between now and launch, you can stay tuned for even more details. Beginning on August 20, uh, 20 2024, 
pre-purchasing any edition of Guild Wars 2 Gen.G. Wilds before expansion launches at approximately 9 a.m. Pacific time on August 20 will grant you the Homesteader title, the Whispering Serpent Pauldron skin and a box of your choice of an of one Serpent Wrath weapon skin. Visit yeah, the website for full details, blah, 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 blah. A new adventure begins. At the launch of Guild Wars 2 Jantia Wilds, you will explore two new maps as you seek an alliance with the lowland codon called the Isle of Jantia. Home, master, master new ways to fly it and explore, and unlock a homestead. An account-wide personal housing instance of your own over the course of three quarterly releases that follow the in initial launch, you will have the opportunity to challenge new content, explore additional story in a third new map, craft legendary spear and backpack, and obtain a new Wizards Vault reward, cosmetics items, relics, affix, and more. So basically, as, was, as they're saying, this expansion is going to be content over three, three quarters. Yeah, so that basically means you're going to really get content and then three more quarters, basically, the expansion is going to give you content over a year. So you're not going to get all the content day one, you're going to get the content over the entire year. So it feels like the game is living and actually giving you gear, which is cool. Now we're going to get a focus on homesteads. Homesteads were excited to add to our take on account-wide housing with Guild Wars 2 Gentia Wilds. Your journey will lead you to your own homestead and account-wide personal instance with a structure and land for you to decorate and cultivate. The homestead feature is unlocked and developed through an associated mastery line as a place to express yourself, share space with your friends, and access nodes and unlockable resources from your personal story home instance. Before we launch on August 20, we'll be back to share loads more information and look at the homestead stick rating. Wielding Spear on land. Previously only available for underwater combat, spears will now have all new skills for each profession on land. Spears can now be used to int interchangeable interchangeable in the aquatic and terrestrial weapon slot but you will need to equip multiple spears to use them in both slots the unlock spear skin in your wardrobe will work for both both versions and if you made kamuhauli kotaki the legendary spear you can equip through the legendary armor amori in either slot cool so yeah basically we're getting land spear uh, different spells you if you want to both use it in water and also above like on land you need to have two spears so no the spear you have now right now you cannot just like put it in both slots automatically next on rates and, and rates and encounters additional challenging encounters will become available alongside new storage uh, chapters in three major releases that follow guild wars 2 yentia wiles in the first of the release Anticipated to release around November 2024, you will get to challenge a new raid comprising three encounters. The story of these encounters will be accessible in two ways, through a classic 10 raid, 10 player raid instance, or 8 raid, or with larger groups and open world events. I'm not quite sure what they mean. A classic 10 player raid instance our eight, oh, our eight raid. So basically, it's, it's the number eight raid they're adding to the game, all with large groups and open world events. I see, I see. This one is also quite exciting. The Warclaw, the Warclaw, which is normally a mount you only get from World vs. World, like the the PvP mode. The Warclaw in Jansen Wilds, the Warclaw mount will be featured with new mechanics previously only available through World vs. World. The Warclaw will be introduced to players in the story of Guild Wars 2, Jansen Wilds, including new skills for PvE play. At the same time, we'll be revisiting the Warclaw of World vs. World skills to provide refreshed experience that builds on what we learned about mounts since first implementing the Warclaw. So basically, it it does also sound like the Warclaw is some amount you can actually get from pve now since it's going to be very focused in the gen tier wilds it would make sense that having so much focus on the mount if you really have to go through pvp to actually get it this one here is the one that really is exciting for me developing a new pvp mode and we got a final thing to share for now over the course of the coming year we'll we'll be seeking input from the community on a new pvp game mode we aim to implement we have a prototype of a map and mechanics that will be ready to start beta testing, beta testing later this year, and we'll, we'll iterate on and refine that. 
taking into account your feedback of the beta test. And the last thing they had to say was Guild Wars 2 is coming to Epic Game Store. Guild Wars 2 and all of its expansion will be coming to the Epic Game Store. We are always excited for new opportunities to introduce Guild Wars 2 to new players. And we're looking forward to welcoming in players with Epic Games accounts later this summer. So yeah, basically I'm very, very excited for actually having this game. Um, sorry, I'm not. No, I'm not excited about the Epic Games. Sorry, I was mixing them both together. I'm not excited about the Epic Games store because I'm, I'm. I mean, if you wanted to play Guild Wars Two, I'm pretty sure you would already play today. Like you know, the game is on Steam. The game is on their own launcher. I I don't honestly think the Epic Games store is going to add any more value. I could be wrong. I could there could be hardcore uh, Epic game fans out there. I don't know of. Maybe I I could see some collaboration. Um, you know, Fortnite players. There's a lot of them. They have to open Epic Games to actually play Fortnite. I could see if they all get smashed a Guild Wars two banner in the face, and maybe uh, you can get a skin in Fortnite by doing this in Guild Wars. I could see something that could maybe give them more players, but. You never know. You never know. Um, but what I was about to say I'm very excited about is the PvP mode. That does sound amazing. I, lo I love PvP in Guild Wars 2, so I would love to see a brand new PvP mode. That would that would be very awesome. So, uh, yeah. But basically, that's everything about the new Guild Wars 2 expansion. It, um, it's, it's not like a crazy big new expansion. I mean, we get a new weapon for each class. Um, we get raids in November, so actually like a, a few months after the release of the expansion, the new raids comes out. Uh, we get housing, the Warclaw Mount is getting updates, two new maps, a third map is getting added later in the game as well. So I would say if you already are a Guild Wars 2 player, like the game, it's exciting news. If you are someone like me who doesn't really play that much, even though I was part of the content creator program and all that, mm, it doesn't excite me too much. And I have a problem with this release date for Guild Wars 2 because, um, so Guild Wars 2 expansion, they release, they say, hey, we're going to come out the 20 August. And as Blizzard, they always do, they always try to put their expansions on release dates where other games are releasing. So. We're going to come back to that when we actually go to the World of Warcraft topic. But um, let's move on to the next topic. All right, so there's a new MMO in the town, which is coming very, 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 very soon. Releasing on the 21 of June on PC, iOS, and Android, Taris Land. A brand new MMO RPG with nine classes, nine classes, Necromancer, Basically, it's called Phantom Necro, but they also introduce it as a necromancer. Uh, so Phantom, Phantom Necro, Ranger, Mage, Priest, Warrior, Shadow Swordman, Paladin, a Bard. See, that's not very often you go to an MMO where they actually have a Bard and a Barbarian Fighter. So that's one, two, three, four, five six seven eight nine yes there are nine classes very nice and i have to admit the phantom necromancer is very cool to get an mmo it's not very often we actually have like necromancers in mmos um the ranger mage priest warrior paladin barbarian fighter is kind of like a standard mmo class but the bard is very unique yes and it is a bard that is going to play music each of these classes has two talent trees. So, um, for example, the Phantom Necro, um, the Priest, the Warrior, the Paladin, the Bard, the Barbarian has two different. They all well, all the classes has two specs, but these classes I just mentioned now has you know one uh, DPS spec and one support spec. So, as a Phantom Necro, you could be a Necro Healer or a Necro Damage Dealer. A ranger can only be damage dealing, so you can have like a spell build where you're focusing on sniper, or one where you have your pets. Mage is fire and frost. Priest is both spec are actually holy, but one of them is damage, one of them is healing. And it's I would say it's really cool to get a priest that does holy damage. Normally in MMOs, you always see priestess as like shadow priestess. But uh, nice to see a holy damage priest. 
warriors, the typical one, you've got one fury warrior build where you have like two dual weapons, uh, well, uh, dual weapons, or you have the tank build. Shadow Swordman is basically the same class as uh, Demon Hunters from World of Warcraft, if you know Demon Hunters. It's the same as Illidan. Paladins can be tanks or damage, and damage you have a very, very big mace, and tanking the classic Paladin with the shield. Bard has two, it's basically, again, both specs have music specs, um, but you have the solo spec, I can't remember what it's called, but something like a solo um, spec, which is like, you know, damage spec, and you have one where you also heal. It's, it's it, They have like a fun name because it's like, um, it's music names, but it's like, you know, for either playing solo or in a band. And then the Barbarian Fighter, it reminds me of the Frost Death Knight. Basically, it, it reminds me of the Death Knight from World of Warcraft with the dual world spec. So you have like a frosty build and you have like a thunderous build. Um, so very much in that thing. It's also an MMO where each of the classes are bound to a race. So if you want to play a Phantom Necro, you're, you're human or some kind of like human-ish. If you want to be a ranger, you're like a knight or like an elf. If you play the Barbarian, you're like a lion. And if you play the Shadow Swordman, you look like an undead kind of guy. And the Paladin is like a high elf, like a big high elf. So it's pretty cool. But again, it's the classic MMO where it's a theme park MMO that has like dungeons, raids, battlegrounds, arena, open world event, open world stuff, uh, crafting, trading. Um, and for the people who likes to do dungeon, it has dungeon finders, so you don't have to worry about like waiting too much time on finding a dungeon or spamming a chat. The game will help you with doing that. Um, guilds, you know, there's so much. Even if you're into PvP like World of Warcraft, you should think about trying this game because it actually have free versus free arena, which is, which has a rank mode. So this could be interesting. Um, the game is a bit interesting when it comes to how it works because you know you know in world of warcraft all the gear you equip is looking differently in this game you start with already a pretty cool skin and then it won't change you even if you get like new items it's first like you can get other skins in the game so basically imagine it's like league of legends where you have your hero that can get the items but it's not changing the appearance of your hero but you can get plenty of skins to your hero so all the paladins are not going to look like the same paladin. There's going to be plenty of paladin skins, but it's not like World of Warcraft where you pick up a new helmet and now you have a new helmet on that looks differently. It's more like skin based. I know they have said something about that they have received a lot of feedback changing that and they are looking into it if it's possible. They also have gender locks on each of the classes, but they are slowly unlocking all the genders for all the classes because people also didn't want it, the gender locks which I understand. If I want to be a paladin, I want to choose if I want to be like a big male paladin or a small female paladin. Um, I usually go with female genders, like a racist. Like, I don't, I don't know why, but I just prefer sometimes like playing a paladin as a female. Um, sometimes I feel like the male is a big, a bit too big. Um, but, you know, it's, it's like a preference. But again, the game is coming out the 21 of June. Um, actually, funny enough, the Chinese version of the game um, is coming out uh, on the 12th. So we're basically talking like se seven hours from this podcast has been recorded. The game is coming in China, Chinese, China. I have downloaded the China version, the Chinese version, and I'm planning to play and stream it on my Twitch channel, which is, by the way, twitch.tv slash Um So I'm probably going to be... And I, I'm the only reason I'm... like. Uh, let me say it this way. If you are a new person who wants to play this game and you want to have a good time with a new MMO, don't download the Chinese version. Wait for the global ver version, which is coming the 21 uh, June. And you might say, but why have you downloaded it? Why are you going to play the Chinese version? Why should we not when you should? I am only doing it because I'm a content creator. I'm only doing it so I can make more videos, more content about the game. So when it actually releases... In global, I will already have established a bit of a community for this game. So that's the only reason. If I was not a content creator, I would definitely have waited because I don't want to start over again on a new character on the global version. But I have to because I want to make content about the game. So that's just how it is. But I'm still going to enjoy it. 
But yeah, the game is made by the company called Tencent, um, which is, uh, I do believe it's a Chinese company, and they own a lot of games. Like, they own 100% of the, uh, the uh, what do you call, the shares in Riot Games, for example. So when you actually play League of Legends Valorant, you play a game that is actually owned by, yeah, Riot, but Riot is actually owned by Tencent. And they have, like, a, a lot of big shares in a lot of gaming companies in the world. You 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 should, you should try to Google it. It's insane how many shares they just like own in different companies. They are they are big. It's kind of like a shadow. It's a big shadow on the gaming market that not many people actually talk about often. But they are there, and you are and and there's a big chance you actually play a game that they either own or like own forty percent of. So um, you should try to Google it for fun. But uh, let's go into bits of details about this game here, Terrace Land. Diverse classes and specialization. Step into the nine classes such as warrior, mage, and priest, each with unique abilities and two specialization paths to master. The highly anticipated dual gender classes will be available class by class, starting with mages and paladins in season zero. The arena and other PvP modes will also be available, class balance, combat maneuverabilities, and arena experience will will see major optimizations to bring you a brand new experience. Flexible talent systems, craft your distinct playstyle using Terrasland unique talentry system, allowing for cost-free adjustments to adapt to different combat scenarios, Terrasland will allow you to train your characters strategically from various aspects, including their talents, equipment, skills, and control, so you'll be able to create your own character and playstyle yourself. Challenging raid encounters, join forces with fellow adventurers to conquer epic level bosses and overcome unique game mechanics and intense cooperative raids. In Season 0, there will be 5 dungeons, 8 10 player raid bosses, and multiple PvE modes, including the Arcane Realm, Universe Hall, and Dark Invasion. Each dungeon has 3 levels of difficulty, so players with different preferences and devices can enjoy the thrill of conquering challenges. Let me try and give some comments to this. So basically, they're saying they're coming in Season 0, which is of course releasing with the game under 21, is coming with 5 dungeons, which all has 3 different modes. So probably like Normal, uh, let's say Heroic, and Mythic. So you're going to have like 3 different difficulties on each of the 5 dungeons. Beside of that, they say they're going to come with 8 10 player raid bosses. What they mean by that is it's not like World of Warcraft where you go into a raid and then you have to walk through the entire raid to kill all eight bosses. This is different. Here you have, let's imagine a raid finder you open up from World of Warcraft. It's like a, it's an interface where you can see all the eight bosses. Then you choose the boss you want to kill and you sign up for him and you will find a group automatically. Of course, you can also team up with people. You can team up a full group. You still have to go through the interface and click you want to go into it, and then it just takes all of you. If you're needing one person, it will just try and find that last person for you. Very, very flexible system. But basically, each of these bosses has its own sign up. So you sign up and join for each of the bosses. So you don't have all the trash bombs in the middle. You don't have the big raids where you walk through them and experience them and walk around and be like, oh, this is a nice place. You don't have that. You basically just have eight bosses who are all aligned, st still connected by law, but they are just just like in different position that you just teleport into with a group. Um, which of course is allowing since you know since I told you earlier that this game is for PC, iOS, and Android, they have a bit of focus that this game needs to be fun for both the PC players and the mobile players. And the mobile players, they probably don't want to go into a raid that could take three to five hours. They probably rather want to do one boss at a time. So now I'm gonna do one boss on my mobile, go offline for a few hours again, come back, do another boss. You can see how that makes sense. And I know some PC players are going to be like, well, but I wanted a raid that took like five hours to do and you could really go in there and feel like it's alive. And I'm like, yeah, I get you. But you would have to play another game to get that experience. Here, it's basically about just joining the raid boss, kill him. If you do, they can be pretty hard. Get out again. Then they also talk about they have these different modes, which are called Arcane Realm, Universal Hall, and Dark Invasion. I am not 100% sure what the, the, these are. 
Um, but it, it is some kind of like PvP events. I think the Dark Invasion reminds of the Helltide event from Diablo, but I could be wrong. I could I could definitely be wrong. But um, yeah, but this game is going to have plenty of content for us all. Vast open world reveal the secrets of Terra's land. Expansive realm filled with puzzles, adventurous, and unique gameplay experience beyond traditional questing. In Terra's land, you can build on your profession to establish a profitable social network and gain wealth through trading. You can just kill time by exploring, exploring, fishing, or playing mini games in the amusement park. Here, you're free to choose your own adventure path. So I guess they're gonna have some kind of like amusement park where you can actually do mini games. They're gonna have plenty of mini games in this game. The game is also made in Unreal, Unreal uh, Engine, which means they have a, I would say, a very bigger um, options to create mini games in this game. Like they could literally do racing games. They could do everything you can imagine. You can do in Unreal Engine. They are actually able to do that. Where with World of Warcraft, they have a very limited engine which they made for an MMO, they suddenly can just do like a racing game. You know what I mean? Like they have an engine that is built as a tap tap target MMO game where Unreal Engine is made for basically whatever you want. So it's, it's I could see for them, it's way easier for them to make like game modes that feels very, very different from the game. Um, but yeah, the last thing they have is uh, cross-platform compatibility. Experience the thrill of rate progression seamlessly across mobile and PC devices with cross-platform data sharing for true gaming freedom. With its detailed optimization, Terrace Land will deliver a superb gaming experience on both PC and mobile, allowing you to embark to an, on an adventure with your friends anytime, anywhere. So basically, again, you can do all the content in Terrace Land on your mobile or on your PC. And I know some people are like, uh, I don't like that, I don't like it on mobile. You know what? I think it's actually pretty cool because I could, let's say, I'm, I can sit here on my PC and do some arena, ranked arena. And then I'm like, okay, you, you know what, guys, I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed. And I say goodbye to my team and I go down to my bed. But I'm like, you know what? I feel like doing a dungeon or I feel like doing some open world um, events or questing or crafting or mini games. And I just take up my phone or my iPad in my bed and I continue with the same character, the same account, and I just continue. The same thing you can do with Genshin Impact, Wolverine Waves, uh, Albion Online, Diablo Immortal, you know. And as long as the game doesn't get bad on PC, you know, some of these mobile ports, they feel very bad on PC, where you can really feel like, oh God, this game wasn't made for PC. This was made for mobile. It feels so bad to play. I would say that's not the case here. I have played the, the beta for this game and it it didn't feel as smooth as World of Warcraft, but it def definitely felt still smooth as an MMO on PC. You could stif definitely still feel there was something odd with the controls in some way, but again, that was a beta for like a year ago or something like that. So all that could easily have been fixed now when the game releases around the corner. Well, actually, I will see tomorrow when I get into the Chinese server. But it, but still, it, this is going to be uh, very interesting. But um, yeah, that was Terrace Land, a brand new theme park MMO coming the 21 of June. So um, let's move on. So at the Xbox xbox games showcase um since you know blizzard activision is now well activision blizzard is now owned by microsoft xbox it makes sense that microsoft xbox show stuff from activision blizzard at their biggest event of the year because i mean they have to be proud they use a lot of money to buy basically activision blizzard so of course they're going to show off content from those games at the xbox event and what they did was they showed the next expansion for World of Warcraft, The War Within, which has already been seen. We, we already at BlizzCon last year, they already showed us that we are getting this world, this soul saga, um, where basically it's free expansion that is all connected to each other. The first one here is called The War Within, which is highly focusing on um, getting into the ground, like under Ezra, going down in the ground and basically finding out, you know, what's going on. The next one is called 
midnight, which looks like it's like a kind of like a um, void fiend. So we might go to the void world, maybe. And the last one is called the last Titan, which looks like a Titan ring ish. Who knows? We might go to some god place or something like that. But these three expansions, the War Within, Midnight, and the Last Titan, are all connected lore wise, and it's three different expansions. I do also believe that the expansions are going to be shorter this time, since they have three expansions they want to like put together. So that is quite interesting. Before going into the detail about the expansion, Basically, the release date for this expansion here, The War Within, is August 26. And that's what I talked about, that Blizzard, they always do this. They always plan the expansions next to other MMO expansions. Always. <laughs> and this time, Guild Wars 2 expansion is coming out at 20, and now World of Warcraft is coming out at 26. Their announcements are pretty close to each other, so I don't blame them. They probably already set this date, before Guild Wars 2 announced their date. We're talking like weeks between these two announcements. So it could easily be that they both just have settled on these dates and now they chose it. I, I could also imagine, maybe because if I go down in my calendar, I can see the 26th is on a Monday, which is where it, it releases. And Guild Wars is releasing the 22, which is a, the first day before. So... It still gives me one, two, three, four, five days to play the Guild Wars 2 expansion before the World of Warcraft expansion releases. Huh, interesting. Uh, but funny, more funny than that is they have an early access. They have an early, oh, sorry. Uh, the Guild Wars 2 expansion was the 20. So that basically means if I go down in my calendar again, we can see here the 20 is at Tuesday, and then the World of Warcraft expansion is of course releasing the 26th, which is uh, the Monday. But funny enough is that now, if you buy the big expansion, if you buy the big package for the expansion, I don't know why they are starting to do this. I I, I don't like it, but um, it is what it is. Um, they, if you buy the biggest expansion now, the Epic Edition, you will get early access. Yes. Don't worry, there's no season started, there's no um, rank started, there's no raid, anything like that. The only thing people get that buys the biggest package and early access is basically, as it says, early access, and they will just get up to a faster max level before other people. The early access is set to the 22. So basically the official launch for me, in Europe especially, is on August 26, 3 p.m. PDT. Early access is starting August 22, 3 p.m. PDT. So both expansions are releasing 3 p.m. PDT, uh, which is um, 3 p.m. PDT for me. That's 12 a.m. So I, both expansions, like, I mean, the expansion is releasing both early access and launch at 12 a.m. for me. But one of them is on the 22 and one of them is on the 26. I mean, early access and normal launch. Then on September 10, we're getting the season one. So basically September 10, we're getting season one where we get the raid and ranked PvP and mythics and all that. But if you really want to try this new expansion already now, there is a beta going on. And again, if you buy the Epic Edition one again, you will both get early access, but you will also get immediately beta access right now as we speak. So. Again, just saying, if you really want to try this new expansion, you can get the beta access now. If you buy the Epic Edition, the Epic Edition will also give you early access already on August 22. Or you can buy this little uh, version, the normal, uh, the basic edition, and then first play the 26. So, it is what it is. That's the roadmap for the next expansion. Now we're going to talk about some of the new features and the stuff they have for this expansion. So, um... Help defend Azeroth from the shadows below. When World of Warcraft The War Within launches on August 26, 3 p.m. PTC, worldwide. Heed the call and take your place in the opening chapter of the World Soul Saga, a thrilling trilogy that begins in the depths of Kas Algar. Rally together to battle against the malevolent forces and lurking perils. Traverse through four expansive new zones, take on dangerous dungeons and raids. 
uncover the secrets within delves alongside the NPC companion, either alone or with friends, and unlock the earthen, a new playable race, discover new hero talents, embrace the warband system, and more. The world saga begins, the wings of a grand new adventure spread widely across the next three expansions. Be a part of the epic story that celebrates the first 20 years of World of Warcraft and sets the foundation of Azeroth's future. Explore the vast depths of Azeroth, journey beneath the surface through the four expansive zones of Kasalgar, the home of the Titan Forge, Irvin. Start your adventure on the Isle of Dawn of the western shores of Kalimdor and descend into the ringing deeps. Then marvel at the brilliant sights of Hellofall before plunging into Ash Kahed and high capital of the Nurebian society. Enjoy a trove of fresh futures. Earn the trust of the Earthen and unlock all new playable allied race. Explore Delves, new bite-sized world instance you can tackle alone or with up to four friends. Plus an NPC companion, grow in strength as you level to, a level to 80 and earn new skills with hero talent trees. Share progress across all your family characters with the warband system and take on the skies with skywriting now available for hundreds of existing mounts. So that was a lot of data, uh, sorry, a lot of news, but let's go through each of these and break them into pieces so you know exactly what you, don't worry if you don't really got what I just said or you, you not really can remember the first thing I said, don't worry, we're going to break them down now. So basically they're coming up with this new thing here called Delphs. Deep beneath the surface lies treasures walls waiting to be discovered. Explore these world instances solo or with up to four friends along with an NPC companion to defeat bosses and gain epic in-game loot. Basically, this is a dungeon that you can either do alone, totally alone, you can do it with a friend, you can do it with two friends, three friends, or four friends, to a maximum of five people. Uh, so I like content like this because this is basically, if I actually get something good out of it, this is content where I can just log on, do it alone. Oh wait, I can see my friend is online. I can do it with my friend. If suddenly I have a Discord community like Lo-Fi Paladins, um, which is my gaming community, then we can all group up and do this together. It's so nice when you have something where you don't only have to be five or four or 10 people, but this is scaling depending on how many you are. But basically, you go down in a very little, little-ish dungeon together with some kind of NPC. I think every week or every month they are like uh, changing. So this week it's one of the dungeons, next week it's another dungeon, or else it was like every time you join them, you get a random one. I can't remember. But basically, they keep like rotating, so it doesn't feel like the same. So yeah, then we're getting warbands. Expands the potential of your elves with an account-wide progression across your family of characters on your Badland account. Regardless of the fac factions, share warband, bank access, war within, renown, achievements and collections and more. So basically, when you are going to the character creation screen now, you have something called warbands. If I do remember right, you cannot add all your characters to that. It was like four or five you can add to the warband. I think it was four, or even just if it was four or five. So if you played games like Lost Ark and a MMO, you have seen how your characters they stand together on the character selecting screen. So basically, when you lock in and select which character you want to play on today, they all stand together on some kind of like fire camp or fireplace where they sit around. This is the same case here. You can select up to four or five characters that all sit together on your main screen. And all these characters you set here will be sharing, um, will be sharing bank access, war bank, war bank access. You have to buy that one. Uh, war within, renown. So basically, the renown that you get from each of the zones, achievements, collections, and more. So it's basically just helping you to have else in the game. You might ask, what if I have ten characters? I play on all of them. Well, I think that just sucks because. <laughs> I guess it's Blizzard's way of saying you should not play with them more than five or five, four or five characters. I don't know. Maybe you can make a warband with a second group of characters. I, I really don't know. But I, I just know that it's focused on having these four or five characters in a warband. So um, maybe you should just play on less characters, I guess. I don't know. The next one is hero talents. So basically, 
the talents as you know right now in Dragonfly is going to stay the same, but they'll be getting a new thing in the middle of the screen where you can choose hero talents. So for example, if you play uh, uh, a druid, there is for example one you can go with called Keep of the Groove, where you get more nature-focused spells. There's also Elune's Chosen, which is giving you more balanced spells, like moon spells. Each of the specs of the game, for example, if you go with the balanced druid, you could probably pick between Keep of the Grove and Elune's Chosen. Perhaps the same if you play, uh, if you choose um, Healer Druid or Balanced Druid, you would be able to choose between these two, Keep of the Grove or Elune's Chosen. If you then go Feral or Guardian Druid, you will be able to pick between two others, which are more themed, better themed for like, you know, Feral and Guardian. The same if you play Warrior, you can choose one that is like uh, focused on uh, Titan spells. You know, the same with yeah. the same with Paladins. Resolution Paladins could. It's basically just a third, a second. Like already now, you have the class talent tree and you have the the spec talent tree. It's basically just a third one in the middle, which is giving you themed abilities. So you can be more like, um, for example, for the Resolution Paladin, there was like. One that is more focusing on holy spells and one that is more focused on retribution spells. So what kind of like color do you want your spells to be? It's basically just giving you more customizations to your class. I would say that it's giving you more customizations to whatever you want. So yeah, more talent trees, more passives. Um, it's going to be fun. Uh, I'm, I'm a bit afraid of it because already now I feel like we have way too many talent trees in the game right now. With this additional, we're just going to get even more talent trees. So um, it's going to be interesting. Beside of this, we're also getting the new race called Urfan. It's a bit of a boring race, to be honest. It's basically just a dwarf, but it doesn't have um, human or dwarf skin. It has stone skin. So it's a stone dwarf. Basically, if you take a normal dwarf and put it next to this earthen and you give it on full armor from some kind of like tier set, you won't see the difference. There's literally no difference. So now when you're doing battlegrounds, PvP, you will be seeing dwarves on both both sides. You're going to see dwarf horde and dwarf alliance. But, you know, technically it's called an earthen. But trust me, when they first get full armor on, you won't see the difference. There's like, there's no difference between them. So, um... Yeah, but this, I guess, could also just lead into something like, you know, I, again, I don't even understand why we have factions anymore. Remove the factions and let everyone who plays PvP, just let them queue in and you're going to have a team A and team B. No reason to have Horde and Alliance because it doesn't feel like we have cross faction now. We have cross everything right now. We can do cross battlegrounds. We can do cross raids, cross arena. Why do we still need these weird restrictions? Why do we only give this hard, half baked cross? Like, I can't do, if I play Horde and you play Alliance, we cannot do Reign of Battlegrounds because the Reign of Battlegrounds system doesn't understand that you can actually do content with some from the other side faction. But we could do Ranked Arena. Or we could do like specific arena, like you know, you can do like specific content, like signing off for a specific thing, but you can't press the random dungeon or random battleground with someone from the other faction, which is like, why? Why are you punishing us? I don't get it, but yeah, let's move on. So um, of course, there's also sky riding, which is of course you can fly around on your mount with that sky riding thing that came in Dragonfly. And now you don't only have to use the dragons, now you can use any mount, basically all of them. And then of course we're also getting new dungeons, eight new dungeons and one challenging raid. Rally Alliance and Horde Defenders together to face menacing new threats taking shape at the heart of the world. So yeah, one new raid and one, eight new dungeons. So uh, very classic, very classic. Um, but yeah, that's basically everything about the new World of Warcraft expansion. It's going to be fun. It's coming out again August 26 or 22 if you buy the early access version. Um, yeah, it's going to be another World of Warcraft expansion. But again, as always, I'm always excited to try it. I'm always excited to do the story, play to the end game. And then basically, I did that with the Dragonfly as well. I played through the entire chapter, understood what is this lore about, watching all the cinematics. And then I'm like, okay, cool. 
and I usually just move on then. I'm having a hard time like sticking with World of Warcraft. I don't know why, but uh, yeah. All right, yeah. Let's go to the last topic. So for ending off this uh, podcast, we're going to talk about the last topic, which is Ashes of Creation, introduces node war systems, featuring objectives, open world PP, and various challenges. The other topics I talked about today is topics where I know a lot about them. I know a lot about uh, the World of Warcraft expansion, I know a lot about Terrace and the new MMO, and I know a lot about the Guild Wars 2 expansion. But um, this one here is a bit different. This one here is uh, one where I actually I don't know much about Ashes of Creation. One of the reasons I don't know much about it is because I feel like it's a game that is coming first in 2027 or 2028, I don't know. Um, it just feels like it's so long away, so I haven't really like followed any news about the game. But they did have a live stream where they showed a lot of PvP activities, and it looked like the MMO community kind of like was blown away by it. So I thought like it was worth watching it, writing down a few notes, looking at different articles, and peeking through like different notes. And I I got this notes for you today, which I'm gonna read up, and we're gonna like react to it together. So um, let's see what they have in store for us with this new thing. Again, if you don't know what Ashes of Creation is, it's basically a new MMORPG coming where it has like, um, it's an MMO that has so many things. I feel like they have too many things, but um, open world, uh, noting, cities, PvP, uh, dungeons, you know, classes. It it has so many things. Like it, it it's not like just a standard theme park MMO where you have your dungeons and raids and that's it. It has so many activities you can do um so it, uh, yeah it's it's interesting um but yeah let's try and go through these notes and uh, see what um what we got from the last live stream in the latest development stream ashes of creation highlighted the node war system detailing the intri- intricacies of the war and events mechanics and explaining the planned functionalities as a significant feature of the game the developers provided a breakdown of its various components with the Alpha 2 slated for later this year, they emphasized that the system will still uh, is still under development and stressed the importance of community feedback for further refinement. Within this system, a major, a major, a major, okay, so not a major, but actually a major, like a, if someone is getting selected as a major, can select from various mayoral commissions that establish quest objectives for players. These quests are tailored to the current needs of the node to facilitate its growth. Just to give you some information, again, when we talk about these nodes, it's kind of like um, it's like it's a city. You you have like cities across the map, and these cities can be taken over, and you can select a mayor that is running the city, which then can have these quests here. And if the if this if the city is needing some kind of like material, I guess then the mayor can then you know set up quests to getting this. I guess it reminds a bit of like this online and new world system, but I think this one here is going to be a bit more complex. Completing these quests grant rewards and temporary buffs of advantage, uh, of or advantage within the node zone or of influence, such as a 24-hour increase in gathering speed. The commission is bought. Uh, the commission sport also future of war. Preparation commission. This setup is designed to be part of the broader event system, encouraging. <coughs> encouraging mass participation participation however initiating a full-scale war declaration involves several steps so yeah okay so you can also like declare war against different nodes but it's not something you just do it's something that you have to prefer prepare for the developers demonstrated the process of turning in and completing a commission where players receive a war token for a territorial territory war these tokens allow a node to declare war on another node. Entry plans to include various types of wars for this phase. Once war is declared, the system flag flags the involved nodes against each other, leading to a large-scale battle where participants both from territories from both territories compete over different strategic points to gain control. So I guess it could be something like between these two cities, there's gonna be like let's say five flag points that you have to control. Kind of like Arity Basin for World of Warcraft or the control in Battlefield or Call of Duty, where you basically have to stand the flag. I could imagine something like that. The developers showcased the process of completing a commission which grants players a war token for initiating territory war. 
This token enables a node to declare. This token enables a node to declare war on another node. Interbridge Studio intends to incorporate multi types of wars, multiple types of wars, for this phase. Upon declaring war, the system flags the competing nodes, triggering a large-scale battle when participants from both territories fight over various strategic points to achieve dominion. Dominance. I mean, it's kind of like the same thing we just read, but differently. The full video of the, uh, video delves deeper into the current state of the systems, current ongoing development, and future plans based on feedback from Alpha 2. Following the showcase, feedback emerged on Reddit, with one user praising the team's commitment to making MMOs feel truly massive again, contrasting it, it with modern MMO that often feels like a solo game despite other players being present. Meanwhile, the discussion of Ashes of Creation forum includes requests for more PvE elements. So yeah, so this time here they showed a lot of like PvP stuff in their newest uh, dev cast, dev show on the live stream. And I and you know MMOs are just the the, the main the, the majority of the player base for MMO RPGs. Like if you take all the MMO RPGs and throw them together, so every player is in the same player base player pool. Most people play PVE. It's just a fact. MMO games, the majority of people is playing PVE as their main objective. So I guess that's why we're going to see in the forum people are basically saying, hey, cool, 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 but could we see some more PvE stuff? They already have shown a dungeon. They already have showed like a world boss, an open world. But um, more PvE stuff would be indeed nice to see as well. But again, I just wanted to include this, that uh, they have some highlights on the PvP right now with the Node Wars. And basically we have a Alpha 2 slated for later this year. So that's going to be interesting. Again, I don't think Ashes of Creation is going to be out anytime soon. It seems like they have so many systems in this game. And uh, yeah, it's, it's going to take a long time to develop. But it's nice to see them going into Unreal Engine 5, which basically allows them to make the game so beautiful. It allows them to have a lot of like new stuff that Unreal Engine 5 supports. So um, I'm sure once first they have like the base game, ready it's gonna go fast with adding in more stuff so um it's gonna be interesting uh, interesting very interesting but yeah yeah that was, that was basically what i had about that so uh thanks for listening thanks for watching if you're watching this podcast on youtube or you're listening to this podcast on any podcast platform i'm really trying to be on every podcast platform out there so if there's a pack if there's a podcast platform i'm not on and you want to actually listen to this podcast on feel free to uh, you know reach out to me and tell me hey i want you to be in this podcast platform can you please submit to it and i will do my best but yeah i, I am on all the majorities of the podcast platforms i'm on youtube uh, spotify you know and so on so you can choose between watching me sitting here talking where i, where I have game trailers behind me or you can watch uh, or you can listen just to me on you know podcast platform while walking running driving whatever you're doing which, whichever fits you. But again, thank you so much for listening to The Violence Tavern, your go-to caving podcast. Um, and yeah, and if, if I can request some love, <laughs> if you're listening to my podcast on any of the podcast platforms, feel free to rate it. If you rate my podcast, it actually helps a lot. Like it, it throws my podcast into the algorithm and makes people actually find and discover it. So if you want, if you're listening to this on Spotify and you're still here or Apple Music, you know, click on the rate button, give it whatever rate you think it deserves and it will help me out greatly. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And I'll see you in another Dvalens Tavern gaming podcast episode. Keep in mind, I'm always trying to release two episodes every, every week, but you know, things could happen like this time where my voice just suddenly disappeared yeah so thanks for being here and i'll see you soon peace out